Hi, I'm Evan Dorn with Modern Machine Shop. We're here today at MSP Manufacturing, an aviation and defense-focused job shop in Bloomington, Indiana. The company was founded in uh, 1943, started making tachometers for planes for World War II. I came on working part-time because I was still working full-time as a narcotics detective. I had a job offer from the FBI too to uh, be a special agent from them. After working here and kind of seeing the the culture and the mission set here kind of fell in love with it. Over the past few years, MSP has grown considerably due to its new president's focus on grants, new software. Cam Assist, Pro Shop, and some of the other processes we've implemented, it makes our flow so much smoother. And an open shop culture. Join us on this episode of View From My Shop as we take to MSP's shop floor and learn more. Uh, and then this is our machine shop. What's cool is everything on this side of the line and also this Nakamura uh, are all new to us since 2022. So prior to uh, 2022, we had uh, no five axis capabilities. Um, we had a really old water jet. Um, so we did a, a bunch of capital purchases in 2022. So we bought our a UMC 750. Uh, we also bought this uh, UMC 500 with pallet pool, um, which was helped by the state of Indiana with the manufacturing readiness grant, so they paid for half of the machine. And then we upgraded our water jet to be able to uh, just do things a little bit more accurately. And we had one that had uh, double the footprint and we just only used a small section, so we consolidated to a smaller one. And then um, we won a, a large contract with BAE um, doing parts for them, so we invested in a, a Nakamura lathe with a, a Patriot Edge bar feeder. So we consolidated what was taking two ops on a lathe, sometimes two to four ops on a mill, and now they're doing it in one op, so it's coming out, uh, and it's also automated, so it's running lights out. I had so a, a close friend who uh, was on SWAT with me that started his own company and was looking for a manufacturer, so we, we started manufacturing for him. Um, some defense companies, we reached out, we are like, hey, we'll do whatever work you guys need done, so that's when I, we got into kind of that woodworking um, stuff and then we just um, I rebranded the company from MSP aviation to MSP manufacturing um, And then what's cool is every single one of our um, mills is fourth axis capable so uh, We have a rotary for every every single one of our mills um, and then we uh, Have some fifth axis work holdings on them what? using the fifth axis like the company oh, fifth axis okay. work holdings right, right, right. Okay. Our, our long-term strategy is to try to outfit every machine with the same work holdings so that if we need to move uh, You know jaws or parts to other machines. It's using the same base plates and the goal is to also have our CMM also have the fifth axis rock plate as well so that when we're measuring parts we won't even have to take them out of the jaws or the work holdings so that if there is a mistake, they're able to put it back on the machine within two tenths and uh, make the fix if, if it's possible. If not, you might have to add another piece of raw material to it. So a lot of these uh, older Hercos that we have do a really good job on our core product, which are you know things that are generally found in the cockpit of almost every commercial airline. So some of our core products include um, instrument cases and the case assembly. So a case, a bezel, and glass, and um, they're usually painted and depends on solder or epoxy, but the bezel's affixated to the glass and then attached to the case, and that's what actually holds the instrument. So that glass part of that case assembly is what you'll see on the, the user side of the cockpit. And then we make clamps that hold the, the case to the back of the cockpit, um, avionic cooling ducts that sit in between the pilot and co-pilot that cool the instruments, and then um, some switch guards that you know cover some critical switches you don't want to accidentally press. Um, and that, as well as a, a handful of other kind of random parts that um, different OEMs put inside the cockpit. I uh, thought this would be a lot better at creating, you know, a future for my children as well as live a somewhat more normal lifestyle. But from there, I, um, my dad promoted me to the vice president in November, and that's when I really started working full time. I worked about two years as a vice president, and then I learned, you know, uh, did a lot of our accounting and financial and then started learning a lot more about the operation side and as well as kind of the HR side. So before we got the Nakamura we had you know just like 12 foot bars of quarter inch material so he made this and we ran with that for like eight months before we were able to get the Nakamura in here and I mean we stayed ahead of their production schedule with it and uh, wasn't lights out but it had longer runtime so that he could 
we had one operator pretty much managing all the lays. I guess kind of with that, uh, do you all just run one shift or? So we, yeah, generally we run one shift Monday through Thursday, but we do have like a skeleton shift of like two younger kids that just prefer not to wake up or as early. So we run six to 4.30 on the first shift and then a, a two to 12.30 on that second shift. And um, generally they're, those two individuals are able to keep, you know, half of the machines, if not all of the machines running. So get really good efficiency out of, the, out of just those two. So how much space do you have like square footage wise for the shop? Uh, so if all of MSP occupies about 25,000 square feet, so I'd say maybe 9,000 square feet to the machine shop. And then we, we use Pro Shop as our ERP and we started implementing that in 2022 as well. And that's been really helpful for just visibility from everyone's perspective. But I think without that, um, we wouldn't be able to um, get ahead kind of how we are now. So that was also a big piece of the equation. Sure, can you go into that a little more, like what all is brought to the table? Yeah, so prior to that, our old ERP system really like had a bunch of modules that didn't talk to each other. And it was really hard to see things at like a 30,000 view. So like, what is my total month's work? What do I have in uh, hours needed to complete job? And it was just like, uh, purchasing wasn't really talking to the work order. So it was very hard to be efficient on how you're ordering things, how you're scheduling things. This whiteboard behind you was kind of how they scheduled it prior to our ERP system. Um, so with ProShop, we're able to pretty much uh, see everything from the estimate to the invoice and everybody can click on it and it's all, um, all has links built in. So like if you're on a part and you want to, or a work order and you want to see more information on the part, you just click the part and it takes you to the part level so you can see the history of rev changes, how many time it's been made, and everything's importable and exportable as well. So I can uh, do a lot of analysis through Excel, Microsoft Power BI, and a lot of things in real time where just wasn't able to do that. And then we're also able to say like, with our core product, we generally have like a two year forecast. So if another company orders that same part, we're able to see as soon as that part's taken out of inventory, it's like, okay, now we're gonna be short in October of next year by this part. So let's build another work order to fund that and it does that automatically. So we're, that's, I think, a big part of why we're able to stay ahead is that at midnight, the system is always cross-referencing what you have in work orders, orders and inventory, and notifying you when you're deficient. Uh, this is our kind of like tumbling room and deburring, but it also has a, a few different ovens in there because we do some of our own heat treating in-house. So like one of these parts, they starts out as a round tube and they heat it up and then bring it to size and then they have on their work orders what numbers coordinate to what, what part. And any time that we're able to, I always try to put like the, either the wet, like the aerospace, the aircraft that it's going to or especially if it's mission critical on the work order. So like we had an example of where Chinook needed like parts like yesterday and I put that on the work order like as soon as possible, it's for uh, Chinook, and like it flowed through here so fast because the guys were all like, let's get this to the warfighter, so. And then this is all the filtration that we need to do just for the water debt. Okay. So although like the main part of this department is kind of that secondary ops or finishing up the machine, this is also where a lot of the jobs will start. So they'll get, you know, saw cut if we don't have the material already ordered to cut. Uh, and then we have a few punch presses back here where we'll um, bend or form some of our uh, bands that go to the avionic clamps that we manufacture. And then we have a couple other jet saws back here and a, an additional bridge port. Um, and so this is our assembly department. And I think this is kind of what separates us additionally for um, other machine shops. So the, the previous one being that we have our own core product. So we have parts where we're approved by the FAA as the sole person approved by the FAA to manufacture those parts. Um, we also have a complex assembly department that um, does an excellent job of assembling parts that generally people that are very good machinists aren't sometimes the people you want assembling things that are very precise and tedious. Um, so yeah, we have a, a great team back here that is about half of our direct labor split between uh, 
our machine shop and assembly. This is an example of one of our, our clamps. So that's what goes to the back of the cockpit and what uh, Jerry's doing is she's uh, part marking it. So we have two Kiants uh, inkjet printers and then uh, an Image inkjet printer. Uh, the reason for the, the two is that um, the Boeing spec and what other likes the ink that is almost proprietary to Image. And then we use, um, we kind of have our own like workforce development program. So we start recruiting sophomores in high school um, that go through like a two year apprenticeship program here. And then uh, if we're hiring at the time, sometimes we'll fund their education and then they come back here and work after they uh, graduate from uh, a, trade, a trade school. And then if we go back here, this is where our, our case assembly is. So this is where they're either soldering or epoxying cases to the glass. And then uh, a big pain point of of the process is the, just the cleaning of the glass. <laughs> but everything is, is very tedious. This is an example of one of the, the bezels that gets affixed to the, the case. Today, I think, is a, is a lot lower production machine shop than what we generally have. But we don't typically have that everybody's stressed. But it's just kind of like knows what's expected, gets the stuff done. And it's kind of a lot less stressful than it used to be. So that's one nice part about uh, Cam Assist, Pro Shop, and some of the other like processes we've implemented is it just it makes our flow so much smoother. I'm not saying del uh, on-time delivery is not crucial, but I was like the last thing I want to do is rush apart to get it to the customer on time and have it be bad. I think if a customer is willing one way, it's like make sure it's a high-quality part. Now we try to do it both, where it's a high-quality part on time, if not early, and with great customer service. And I think if you can do those three things you don't really even need to invest in marketing because your customers will just come back with more. And then back in here too, we have a, a big kind of paint booth. We sold it off about four years ago, but we used to have a construction manufacturing equipment company. So they made like big roadside ditchers and whatnot. Um, so we made a paint booth for that. So you could, I think you can fit a car in there if you really wanted to, but so many of our, our parts require paint now and that's almost become our biggest backlog is you know a lot of these Boeing spec paints and. All of our case assemblies get painted. Um, a lot of our defense parts are now getting painted. So that's where we've tried to market. It's like um, we can provide uh, paint, second ops. We can uh, supply chemical finishing through our supply chain um, and then paint at the end of it and or assembly. So we've tried to market like instead of managing five vendors now, you only have to manage one. Uh, and that's where we've seen a lot of growth in our defense company is like, oh, I just have to cut one PO and just keep asking those guys where it's at instead of following every part of the supply chain. So this is our uh, quality department. Um, it's where we receive in um, our material. Um, we do our first piece inspections, um, as well as incoming and outgoing inspections for outside processing, but it's kind of central to our, our company because um, our parts run in and out of here so frequently. Um, so we have uh, four individuals that support our quality department, and then uh, we're looking at it, adding additional equipment that'll be here in the first quarter to to scale up our quality department to match the capabilities that our machine cur shop currently has. Sure, so what are some of the kinds of equipment that you've got here? So we have, uh, we have a ferro arm, uh, which Luke's currently using to uh, measure that, that larger part there. Um, we also have a Keyence uh, image scanner as well, and then we have a comparator and then a, a manual CMM that's uh, back in that room. Um, and then we're looking at adding a hexagon CMM here in the first quarter as well. This is probably our, our most precise, for, but it's also a super small footprint. And uh, it works better with things that are uh, shorter Z height. So like we do a lot of these bands for our clamps that are almost two dimensional parts and you have a small Z height, but uh, we do thousands of them. So it's nice to bring them in here, you know, every like couple hundred to just make sure that we're not floating one way or another with the tolerances, but. Any particular jobs? even vaguely speaking, that would do require the expansion to the quality department? I think it's more of a, a tackling a volume problem than the sure. measuring now. A lot of our work isn't pat even to the tenths. Usually it's like one thou, half a thou. So we haven't ever had to measure those. But my thought is like once you have it, then you can open up the ability to, to quote and then maybe machine it. But so having those kind of extreme uh, ability to do that. Yeah, so it's kind of, we've upped our capabilities in the machine shop and we haven't really done an equal part in quality. So kind of bringing quality up and then 
after I do that, I can increase the capabilities of the machine shop and then keep like going back and forth. Hey everybody, Brent Donaldson with Modern Machine Shop here. And if you just watched that video and you're thinking, boy, I'd like my shop to be featured in the View for My Shop series, then just send us an email at shopvideo at mmsonline.com and tell us what sets your shop apart.